Okay, so the bomb was dropped yesterday. NVIDIA has finally released their Turing Architecture brand new cards, the 2080 Ti, the 2080, and the 2070 card. Now, this launch, however, is a little bit strange in how they really did it because usually when I go and I see a launch or I you know, watch a launch, one of the main things that they're always showing is a lot of gameplay and numbers showing how this card is going to be faster than the previous generation cards and the other cards that are on the market. However, this launch was different in a few different ways. First of all, not a whole lot of gameplay was really showed. Now, there were game trailers, of course, and things like that, you know, saying, hey, cool, look at how all the colors look and everything with this cool new ray tracing technology, right? Well, ray tracing technology is really there to make everything in a game that's supported just actually look better. All the lighting, all the shades, all this stuff. It's really, you know, hair works, all the, you know, the super NVIDIA stuff that, you know, NVIDIA has proprietary to their card. You know, all these things that make games look more like real life. They really take a heavy strain on the card. Because for one thing, think about it, we're here in reality. When you're inside of a game, that video card itself is having to like kind of recreate, you know, the reality in three as much as it can off you know whatever's inside of the video card and this is how ray tracing is really going to help because ray tracing will completely make the object that you're looking at it's going to do it very very fast in real time now so all the other stuff that was taken away before in rendering will now be out the window now here's where the big question also is how long are these particular RTX cards really going to last on the market? I mean, let's just talk about that because they released the TI version right off the bat at the launch. Now, this is something that's usually not done. Usually, they release you know the initial cards, the Founders Edition, then the aftermarket guys put their fans on them. They go out to market, you know, and then you know they release the TI, you know, usually months or a year later, you know, stretching the life of you know that chipset. So you know, is the Turing chipset in its current you know iteration what it is? Is it really going to be around a long time? Because where are they going to go from here? I guess the next thing we're going to have is a Titan RTX, but then you know beyond that. That, where are they going? Are they going to reintroduce SLI again and really start supporting SLI again? I mean, what are the changes being done here? So here's my advice right now for people because since we didn't see a whole lot of gameplay, I don't really know if when we get the cards in here, if just on like the regular settings that you see, if we're going to see this, you know, crazy performance in gameplay, unless it's just so utterly ridiculous, which just could backfire in my face like a giant fart and I could look like a poo poo man. But, you know, um, I'm thinking that we're not going to see a whole, whole lot of super advanced frame rates over the 1080 Ti generation and their Titan generation XP. You know, I don't really think that we're going to see that right now. I think we're going to see improved performance, just not the double digits that people were talking about. But I was having a conversation with another friend of mine who works over at NVIDIA, and we were talking about how people really, they go play like games, you know, like the latest Final Fantasy, and then they complain. They say, oh my God, you know, NVIDIA is gimping the card because when they turn on Hairworks and they turn on all the features and all this stuff that make it look like, you know, real life waving flags because of physics and all this stuff, well, then obviously the card's going to be taxed. Like I said earlier, you know, making this 3D environment is what really taxes the cards. But now with this ray tracing technology, they're going to be able to do this much easier. So what I'm thinking, and I may be wrong, but this is what I'm speculating at this point, is that I feel what's probably going to happen is now you're going to be able to play all your games with all the bells and whistles completely turned up and you're not gonna lose those frame rates. So we're probably going to see now is that everything running over 60 frames per second with all the bells and whistles going on. Now, as far as how it's gonna translate into 4K, I don't really know. 4K to me is kind of, I don't know, it never really got out of the gate. You know, it's like a really super fast horse, but it just really didn't go anywhere. Not that many people I know ever come to me and say, hey man, I want to build a 4K gaming system. It's either I want a gaming system or I want a gaming system so I can do 3D stuff and get me some Oculus or something. It's like that. So I'm not really getting many people coming up to me and saying, hey man, I want a game. I want a 4K monitor. I want to do 4K gaming. I just don't hear that because right now it seems like, you know, 1440 is probably the, you know, the optimal, you know, resolution for a gamer. 1080, you can really kick butt, but we all know that 
10A is getting you know, a little bit on the old side. So we want to get you know ultra wide, make that monitor a little bit wider so we can see more of the environment and all that type of stuff. So at this point right now, I feel that the prices on these cards are also like really expensive. I mean, it's $1,200 for a top of the line card. And I mean, even though the technology is there, that's a lot of money. Pretty much the most expensive price tag that I've ever seen on a non-Titan or non-Quadro card from the folks over at NVIDIA. And that kind of makes me kind of you know scratch my head. And I, that particular thing, I, I have to say, I'm not really too happy with. Now, obviously we do see, you know, that the 2080, the 2080, um, excuse me, the 2070, they're going to be at a lower price point, but that 2080 Ti is really up there in the price. You know, the 1080 Ti was nowhere near that price until, you know, obviously, you know, we had the big mining craze and everybody took your card. So you couldn't buy a card with a life view because of that. And I also don't know. Now, these cards could also be really geared towards miners. There could be a lot of stuff that in this particular technology and the touring and architecture that makes it so that, you know, a guy who wants to go out there and mine can mine like a crazy guy. I don't really know these things. Um, I have been told though that we will get a briefing. The cards will be coming our way, so we'll be able to test those things out. But for right now, I would say that unless you are completely unhappy with how your card plays in your system. If you have a 1080 Ti, you know, and you have a 1080, that unless you really aren't happy with how your game looks at all, you know, you like all the bells and whistles on and without them on, you feel the gameplay is just then yeah you should probably be seeking to upgrade to one of these different type of cards. Probably not the $1,200 version, but somewhere right in the middle. You know, if I was a gamer, that's where I would usually go, go for the middle technology. The lowest end technology seems to get replaced faster. The highest end is always super duper high. So it's, you know, it's, it's you know, kind of like the girl in all the beds in the old time story. You know, you're looking for that perfect spot and that's probably going to be right in the center of all that. But um, if you're happy with your card, and you know you don't need to turn all these bells and whistles on i don't really think it's really time to upgrade yet i just haven't seen you know enough evidence out there so far that's made me go oh my god yeah you guys need to get in the pre-order line pre-order these cars and just you know god forbid the miners want to take them all up and drive you know drive the price now that's the only thing about pre-ordering that I see where, like, you know, they're really trying to just catch the fish early. Like, you know, like early bird gets the worm. They're trying to get everybody in there. Okay, we've got new cards. We'll sell them to you first through pre-order, you know. But in a way, it's kind of going on faith because we haven't really seen exactly how the game performance is going to be. We know it has ray tracing. We know it's going to make all the games and all the shadows and everything look really nice. That's good. So games will probably, honestly, with these cards, I can't say they're definitely probably going to look better. That's going to be for sure. But will they actually perform totally faster? That is yet to be seen. So I'm Elric. You guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Like I said, strange launch strings. Things are afoot over there at NVIDIA. But hey, new cards have been released. Now we're waiting for them to get them out to the market, get them out to the people so we can all say, hey, yeah, this stuff is the greatest thing or what the f